<laughs> Let's do it. Um, uh, my name is Taylor Mack. Uh, I'm interviewing harp artists um, in a series for a, a HowlRound so that we can all get to know them and their amazing projects that they're doing. Um, if you don't know, HARP is a program, uh, it's a residency artist program at the Hear Art Center. They give you multiple years to work on a project. It's artist um, driven, so you get to kind of uh, decide what you need. Uh, and sometimes they produce your project, sometimes they co-produce. Um, often it's uh, 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 the the artist can say, I want, I want to work on it for four years. I want to work on it for one year. I want to work on it for many, many, many years. Um, so it's all just kind of what, how you want to do it. There's usually a lot of hybrid um, and uh, a hybrid type of work. So combining music and theater and puppetry and dance and video and all of that kind of often gets squished into um, uh, the work. Um, and uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your projects? Uh, yeah, because I don't really know either one of you, but I'm excited to get to, <laughs> get to know you. Uh, do you want to start, Spencer? Go, go for it, Michael. Go. OK. Uh, I'm Michael. I'm Michael Kikuchi. Uh, so I um, started my theater career based on visual arts. Um, so I like 2013. I started like first uh, puppet show, and you know since then um, I just keep making uh, the, my own uh, puppetry works extended from my visual artworks. And and then we met like I met Spencer through the Lama um like I think that was like a puppet slam, and then we really like uh, the each other's piece, and then we become mm -hmm. friends. And he asked That's me to. That's the best way. I'm sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but it's just the best way to. I know. Wants you to like audition or or apply for things, and the yeah. best possible way to find people is just to hang out in various festivals and watch their work and fall in love. Right? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, through yeah. the puppets. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. So and then. Uh, he asked me to collaborate uh, and then apply for this here as a residency 2017, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then he brought up the ideas and that is the uh, the actual Japanese and America's World War II history, which I mm -hmm. didn't know actually at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and then I was so interested in, and then we decided to collaborate and apply for the here. So, we got in and we've been making for over three years, four, three years. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then now uh, aiming to premiere our piece, uh, more like leaning to the digital form, but at the same time having the live audience, if it's possible, um, yeah. this fall, this, uh, uh -huh. this uh, September, November. September, uh, yeah, like no November, right. November. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's weird at now. Uh -huh. uh, and is this is that a usual amount of time for you um, to to work on a piece, or do do you tend to take that much time, or is it longer or less, or is it? We thought like it's uh, actually we were uh, premiering a piece like last this past December, mm -hmm. um, but then like right Probably. before we you know, getting in more um, process to like make everything together, then like the world shut down. So yeah, 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 it's yeah. extended. Um, but I imagine you've had a lot of workshops in that period. Is that yeah. true? No. Yes, work in progress yeah. shows and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, and, and Spencer, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, uh, I'm a puppet artist. I design and build and perform and direct and write and kind of the puppetry is the through line for lots of different kind of um, um, artistic careers. Um, I, I create my own work independently. My kind of day job is in film and television puppetry, um, but then my, my kind of passion is, is theater. Um, and uh, like Michael said, I felt we saw each other's work and fell in love with I fell in love with Michael's work. It's so visually dynamic and interesting and unique. Um, 
So then, you know, like like you said, Taylor, like when you're at a festival, you see something and you're like, oh, how can I get in the room with that person? How can I get to work with that person? And so I heard a, a radio lab story about these about these paper balloons um, coming from Japan and uh, inspiration struck. And I was like, oh, this might be the perfect excuse to get to uh, call up Maiko and say, hey, do you want to you jam on this? Do you want to see what, what we could make together? Yeah. Uh, and so, and, so it's and the piece is called Nine Thousand Balloons. Is that what it's called? Nine, 9 Thousand uh, Paper Balloons. Yeah, Paper Balloons. And so, talk a little bit about it. It has to do with uh, World War Two and <laughs> internment camps and Japanese ghost stories and <laughs> all <Yes>. of that. Yeah. <laughs> all of that. Um, so it's a uh, actual history, but almost blacked out. Um, so that's why I didn't know. The details of the first place, but the the story is the history is about uh, like Japan's uh, made nine thousand paper balloons. So balloon made by the paper, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very like uh, like a uh, rigid um, balloon that uh, over seas, like uh, over the Pacific Ocean. So uh, it's a balloon that can travel all the way across the Pacific yeah. Ocean. <laughs> Exactly, like by jet streams. Any, by, oh, so there wasn't any <clears throat> navigation. <laughs> they were just, yeah, they send them up and they hope that the wind takes them there. Right, uh -huh. yeah. Right. So Japan, uh, the scientists, like military, all like figuring out how to make the, the weapon. And then the, the balloon has the bomb uh, attached so to it. Right. Yeah, so of course, no, it, no, so it's not just a balloon. Bombs in the air. <laughs> Hoping yeah. they would, they the jets would take them to the mm -hmm. U.S. <laughs> isn't that it, isn't it ridiculous? That's exactly it. The, <laughs> Japan was the first country to understand the jet stream, so right. they they had measurements that there was this this fast current moving of air, <laughs> and they thought it it might distribute over North America over the United States. Um, and they were running out of materials. They didn't have a they didn't have a jet that could get across the ocean. They didn't have a missile that could get across the ocean. And so they they made, this was one of the secret weapons they developed. Um, it's and it and it worked. These these balloons, hundreds and hundreds of these balloons, made it uh, across the Pacific Ocean and then uh, landed all over North America. Um, the the one there's one balloon as far east as uh, Michigan. Um, Kansas, Iowa, Oregon, Arizona, you name it. There were there were hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, that, and, that were... and, they, and they blew up when they landed? Is that the idea? So yeah, the idea was that it would it would as as the you know, the balloon lost its air, it was full of hydrogen, it would it would um, fall and as soon as it would touch it would detonate. Um, the, it was ultimately a, a, a failure, but their hope was that they would start forest fires and that really it was, it was an act of uh, terror, right? The idea that uh, Americans would look up and there were silent bombs dropping from the sky. Um, right. And so that's why when Michael talks about the blackout, there was a military and a press blackout so that, so that the American public didn't panic was, was the idea. Um, and then in our story, we talk about some of the casualties. There was one family in Oregon that discovered the shrapnel, discovered a, a live bomb on a on a picnic, and it detonated and killed these children. Um, and so it's part of part of the narrative that we're weaving into the show. Huh. So it was blacked out from the American perspective, but was it blacked out from the Japanese history? In Japan I mean, too. Yeah. So, I mean, huh. yeah. Because yeah. the, because the Americans were so tight-lipped about it, then the Japanese weren't sure if it was successful or not. They had no way to track it. So ultimately, oh, they gave. So even though they were reaching America, they ended up giving up the effort. Um, it's a, it's a it's a fast. It's it seems it's so both poetic and terrible. It's it's mm -hmm. it has all these things that we were drawn to. Yeah. We were talking about yeah. this. Story. Yeah. And how do the internment camps work into into the piece? So it's actually like not um, including the detail of the internment camp. Oh, okay. All right. Um, is that an old idea? I read something. I read an idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is we what were happens. thinking we about these it. Ideas when we apply, and then we totally <laughs> change. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we were kind of thinking about including the more detail about the internment camp at the the beginning of the beginning stage of this piece. Uh huh. Um, so our piece like we we will like show the clips later but like our piece is kind of like uh, shifting from some sort of like um 
uh, the the story we made up to a more real, like more involving each family's history. So yeah, and then uh, so like my grandfather was also like fourth point in World War Two, and Spencer's grandfather too, and oh, wow. so like they're you know um, like essentially they're enemies. Uh, mm -hmm. even though they never met, but then right. um, their grandchildren uh, <laughs> become friends yeah. through puppetry and then making <laughs> the peace <laughs> together. <laughs> wonder of puppetry. World yeah. peace yeah. through puppetry, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's kind of like a become more important theme for us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so that's why uh, we are not uh, our family history is like not um, really related to the internment camp. Um, yeah. So that's why it's kind of like a little fading. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we are using from that time period, we are incorporating a lot of propaganda, both from the Japanese side and from the United States side, which kind of fills in. Maiko is this incredible collage artist. And so we're, we're using these kind of really kind of bombastic intense propaganda images to kind of to kind of show the sense of the other things that were going on racially during this time period. Uh, yeah. And and how does juxtaposition work into this? Because, you know, balloons are so whimsical and beautiful and magical, and yet they're delivering this um, violence or this yeah. desire for violence. Yeah. And uh, so how is how are you working with juxtaposition with your piece? Or, or is it just naturally there? I, I mean, that's been that's been the question, right? And as we uh -huh. explored shadows and all, all different like types of puppetry that's been the ultimate crux is how what is what is this um intersection and we we brought on a, a really talented director a couple years ago Aya Ogawa who did Suicide Forest a number of number of great shows and and um we kind of circled around we we've we kind of landed on this question how do we collapse the distance between us and it felt like a broad enough question that could it could it could uh, approach that juxtaposition um, and then it also fits with the kind of artwork that we're drawn to. We're kind of taking the 3D and collapsing it into 2D. We're collapsing the distance between our grandfathers, between two nations, between Michael and I. So, so that's be, th that juxtaposition has become this kind of central question of, of collapsing uh -huh. distance. And, and, and I imagine anticipation too. Um, yeah. uh, you know, you send a balloon off and will it work? And that time that you're waiting for it to either arrive or, or like, yeah. so, I mean, did the Americans know that this was all coming? I mean, that, that was there, um, I don't know, <laughs> uh, um, spy knowledge <laughs> that, that this had been launched? Or, so or there did were, they just know about it when it was arriving? Exactly, that's exactly right. So there was a series of kind of, um, uh, unique, weird uh, occurrences where somebody would get this giant scrap of paper on their in their farm, or they would see something floating by that they thought were a UFO and they couldn't identify it. And they finally, and the military, the the balloons were unmarked, so they weren't sure if it was a weapon or if it was a you know a weather experiment or something. And they finally found out that it was a weapon and it was from Japan. So on the on the uh, balloon bomb on this ring of that carried the bombs, there were all these sandbags that would release at timed places so that the balloon could stay in the jet stream as the temperature uh, went up and down. Uh -huh, so right. Some of these sandbags <laughs> really? dropped. I know, it's it's amazing. It's amazing, <laughs> yeah. like old school I mean, vicious smart, yeah. And so they looked in these sandbags and they discovered that the sand in the sandbag was only found on one specific beach in Japan. And oh, so they wow. the stand back and they're like, oh, this this is a weapon. This must be a weapon of war. And at the time, they weren't sure if they were going to carry chemical weapons or if there was going to be other payloads coming along. Um, so, it's, I mean, it's 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 straight out of science fiction, right? The, this floating, this yeah. floating kind of death. Yeah. And, and and are were the balloons all manufactured? I mean, as as designers, are are you able to make? as many different kinds of balloons as you want or are they all is are they uniformed <laughs> and is that part of it <laughs> um, or are you even showing the balloons i don't know so michael uh, you had you had time yeah yeah right. i mean the the balloon is um like they're trying testing out like all oh, like what's the best way to make the balloons and then uh, -huh. uh like 
there like some um, the certain process like how to make the, the balloons like they're layering a lot of Japanese paper and gluing uh, with um, like a, what is uh, what's kind of glue um, it's a, it's that, a paste, like, like a mulberry paste yes um, so it when it's dry it makes like really hard uh -huh. um, so so like I like there is like a, the the prototype of the the balloon and then like they made um, like in, transformed the the school in Japan into the factories and then um, so many Japanese uh, guard students uh, they're like making the paper balloons uh -huh. so. That's like, but I imagine, uh, like, this is in my fantasy version of it all. It's yeah. like, oh, arts and crafts. We get to make all these balloons, right? <laughs> they don't know what it's for, but they're just like, we're making lots yeah. of balloons and everyone gets to be different. Or they're like, no, the balloon has to be exactly like this. And here's your, you know, yeah. or I mean, are there imagery? I'm sure there's some photos of these balloons, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is like a, it the, it's great. huge balloon. <laughs> like, I, it's really like, I, it's, it, it's like kind of, I can't believe that big balloon. It looks really perfect. Like, a, you know, sphere balloon. It's like made uh -huh. by like a people's hand. Yeah, so yeah. that was, and then, wow. yeah, as as same as the uh, the Oregon's family, the kids got killed by balloon. In Japan, we are focused on like the, the guard student who is making balloon. Uh, uh -huh. They, like I like when we watch the documentary, like some of them knows what to make, what what they are making, and some of them like really ambiguous what they're making. Uh, like they told it's a secret weapon, don't tell anybody. Um, but some of them like knows like this is a special weapon, so like they're very proud of themselves to work uh -huh. for like Japan, like work for the emperor. Uh -huh. So there are so many complicated like feelings um, in the teenage girls. So that's we're kind of emerging and then making the, you know, the one of the scene uh, of the, uh -huh. the of this show. And, and then the theatricality, Taylor, like what you mentioned is is that's been part of the fun and the challenge is figuring out how do we. How do we fill the space? How do we feel 9,000 balloons? How many how many balloons do we have to see for us to believe it's 9,000? Are they, can we get away with flat paper? Do they need to be spherical? You know, like all of these questions. Uh -huh. um, we've, we've blown up thousands of, uh, you know, like <laughs> latex balloons and filled the room. We've, we've gotten some giant weather balloons and, and, and played with those. We've, yeah. the versions of balloons right now that we're, that we're experimenting with are um, uh, light up. Kind of, kind of oh, we've added this kind of beautiful. light up glow from the from the inside, almost like a lantern. Uh -huh. um, but it's been a, it's been a really fun design challenge to figure out what how much do we need to show, how much can we get away with. And now that we're going virtual, <laughs> there's going to be entire scenes that that we're going to be able to shoot from the balloon's point of view, bird's eye view, looking down. Um, so it's been a fun it's been a fun challenge. Wow. So it, so you're making the you're you're making this show for a virtual audience but but then also for a live audience in november is that the yeah so yeah. so the hope is the hope is we're, we'll be performing it live we'll both be in the space performing it live there at here um and it'll go out to a virtual audience but they will also have a small group of people or at least this is the plan right now right if it can be seen yeah, yeah, safely <laughs> is to have is to have kind of vip behind the scenes seating there live so so people can see how we're doing everything um, with all the different puppet setups, all the different camera setups. It'll all be mixed and engineered there live on site. Um, so that, oh, that'll be cool. like a scenes experience. Which oh, I it's so cool. exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so um, I know that uh, a lot of the black and white, well, this is what you said in the, in the description, that black and white photography is, um, in, it was inspired some of the aesthetic of this and also um, um, Japanese uh, wood prints. And, uh, and so I'm just wondering uh, a, a little, some of the imagery that I've seen has been kind of, um, used black and white imagery. And I'm wondering um, what is the difference between black and white 
uh, on a stage in a live performance as opposed to um, in a photograph? And how do you transfer that? Um, and and then when you're making a virtual show, of course, the, <laughs> then it becomes maybe easier, but maybe harder because it's a live performance. So uh, the, those are all the technical weird things that I, I'm curious about. Yeah. Mm. That's, a, that's a great question. We, I mean, I think we were excited initially about, first of all, that kind of black and white sets you in a specific time period, right? Or, or, it, or mm-hmm. it gives the audience cues to maybe where this is, story is taking place. The juxt- that going back to that juxtaposition of these two kind of this black and white, this color scheme, um, the, this this like floating beautiful white object, and then the and then the black death that it's carrying. You know, it felt it felt like black and white was an opportunity to to lean into those to all of these juxtapositions. Um, our grandfathers being enemies, us being friends, those those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but then but then I'd say now, Michael, I feel like it's growing so much due to michael's design and her sensibility i feel like i feel like we're definitely like kind of fleshing out the world in a especially one one thing we've been considering is what does japan feel like and what does america feel like so as our balloon we travel the journey of you know like of one balloon um and so when we our storytelling in japan feels very um compact and mm-hmm. and specific and tight and that's based on Maiko's experience and our director Aya's experience and then as the balloon crosses over the Pacific Pacific Ocean you know everything opens up visually and gets much wider and broader and then and then the United States it, it becomes even there's even more distance between we're kind of leaning into like the Americana the planes that kind of space that that you could see if you were a balloon traveling so so I mean as puppeteers I feel like the 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 coloring of the world is is a huge opportunity for us but but then to the virtual aspect we're still figuring it out it's going to be really interesting to see like how how what we've built already will translate to camera and where we're going to need to boost boost things or take things away yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) and how how are you working michael how are you how are you do you make it home do you do you you just build it at home, or you, you, so you don't have a studio, but that you go. To, um, but. I do have a studio, so I'm working in my studio and at home uh-huh. at the like same time. But um, yeah, for this project, it's because I'm in New York and Spencer in in the Kansas, so we literally have a the distance, and so the things we have been doing is like making the storyboards, uh, or animation version of the storyboards or uh we even make the the mock-up like the toy theater of toy theater like this tiny like model of the toy theater um like especially about the the girls student scene and then we just like meeting in the zoom and then so here i made an emerging like how the show would be what do you think that kind of things like we've been doing yeah um, and it's been really hard you know it's been incredibly yeah. difficult we've had we had all oh, this momentum we did this great live in-person workshop at the henson carriage house space in march like days before you know everything <laughs> shut down and so we were, we had all this momentum going um, and now we've had to, you know, had to reassess everything. Meditate for an entire year. Yeah. I know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, but I imagine that um, working with a lot of paper, right? Are you working, you're working with a lot of paper. And um, my experience working with paper is that there's, it means you have to constantly be building even as you're performing, um, even as you're rehearsing, you're just rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. Is that true? Or is it, are the structures that you're working with um, solid enough that you can reuse uh, the same thing over and over? Um, so I th- I would say it's kind of like a how to do like the you, the you, the you. Like I made, like uh-huh. we made, uh, so like it's, kind of based on my collage work. So it looks like a two dimensional and then using mm-hmm. the cardboard stuff as well. But um, at the same time, we were thinking how to transform, try how to make the 2D collage artworks in the 3D, you know, the space. So that's, um, so we need like certain plan and like, it looks 2D, but like uh, also it's like needed to like visit um, 
like um, the structure. Um, so it's kind of back and forth. Um, yeah. We, we try to be, you know, because as a puppeteer, you can spend all your time building things and, and, and neglect other parts of your process. So we've, we've been trying uh -huh. to be super specific and, and, and really do detailed storyboards so we know exactly what we do need to build and what we don't. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. with, with the knowledge that then once we get in the space, we'll, we'll discover things and things will get scrapped or combined. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, one, one thing we're excited about in the virtual space is that we only have to fill um, the screen, right? We're working in here, even though here is this right. small, intimate um, space, we, we love playing with scale. And so we were building these giant uh, cardboard heads and giant cardboard hands and all these things mm -hmm. um, that, you know, take up storage and transportation and like all the things right, that, like, right. practical make as a theater maker drive you crazy. And so we are excited to, to scale down uh, uh -huh. for virtual space, but still be able to push into the frame, yeah. still hope to get the feeling of that, um, the, the flight and the expansiveness. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's and, a and, process. And, well, in kind of keeping with the storyboarding, um, what uh, is the Japanese uh, ghost story um, still part of this? Is that uh, kind of what you're doing, telling a, a ghost story to some degree? Uh, so the ghost story, um, I don't think we are like using the the ghost story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've kind of moved away much. from that now. You've moved yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> I just love that because but it's the thing I hate most about writing a writing a grant or an application is you know, you write the description before you've made it. Yes. And then like people yeah. like bring it up for the rest of your life with the project. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> well look. <laughs> It was 10 years ago when I wrote that. It's totally different. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting to hear, you know, what, uh, how a, a piece transforms. Um, yeah. Shall, can we watch a little sample? Can we, can sure. we see something? Sure. Yeah, great. Yeah. All right. Um, so we, <laughs> we have yeah, why like don't you a... set it up? Tell us, tell us what, yeah. uh, what this exactly was, what stage right. uh, right. it was filmed in. So, so far we had like a three walk in progress show, a four walk in progress show, mm -hmm. um, the first culture mark, uh, and then a little experimental walk in progress at the here's um, the DOT uh, downstairs uh, theaters. And then we had a short walk in progress at the Dixon Place. And then we had like a second culture mark, uh, 2019. So we have like a four different work in progress. We uh, uh, we are trying like a different approach for each work in progress to figuring mm -hmm. out what we need and then how to develop the first one. Um, so you will see the differences, um, even though we are like based on the same story. Uh, and then like at the end, um, like just a little clip for the, the tiny mock-up, uh, the guard story we were making during the pandemic. So, okay. okay, okay. Well, then. I'm going to share my screen. Um, all right, so here it is. <laughs> Several branches of the Japanese military host a covert meeting where they brainstorm ways to attack the United States. 
One scientist, a meteorologist, stands at the head of a long table. Hi, Michael. Hi, Spencer. Where are you? I'm waiting for you. We have a show tonight at the Dixon Place. Tonight? At Dixon Place? I thought I was going to tell the 18th. What? Tell them the history. I'll, I'll, I can give them the prologue, okay? Are you ready? No, I'm so sorry, but it's going to be great, okay? Break a leg. That's it. <laughs> um, it's extraordinary. <laughs> and I, what I love about the, I've never seen a work sample like that where they, you show the process in a, various videos. It really gives people a sense of how, how long it takes to make something and how you're experimenting. It's a great work sample. Uh, oh, thank you. And, and beautiful imagery, at, um, especially at the end there with what, where you guys are right now. Just. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to see it. It's so fun to see just the, the you know, the ideas that stick, right? Over, uh -huh. over the four years, like the, the cardboard phone. And there's a few kind of like tent poles that we found like, oh, yeah, yeah no matter what, we'll have, you know, uh -huh. a version of this, this and this in there. So it's 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 fun to look back and see how much it's grown. Yeah. Yeah. And are either of your grandfathers still alive? Or um... My grandfather passed away. Uh, uh -huh. my almost seven years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the thing is, I, my solo performance is always I wearing my grandfather's face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> so sweet. So it's not because he passed away. Like I, I uh, start making my puppetry show wearing his face, um, like 
a year, the, the two years before he passed away. And then I even asked him if I can use his face and he said, no, <laughs> but I use it. <laughs> but you did it anyway. That's an artist for you. <laughs> yeah, he's very difficult to stop on Japanese grandfather. He hates America so much. Oh. He was so disappointed that I come to US and, but, but he, yeah, but he cared about me a lot and then nah, he's very happy to hear like i have a lot of friends here but uh -huh. he never want to visit me in u.s so he's how he like have uh, the trauma for america is that much um mm -hmm. and also spencer's grandfather is still like he's 92 90 yeah 96 wow. 96 wow. oh my wow. god he's still he's doing great lives in, wow. lives in iowa and he um i've actually interviewed him um and recorded our conversations about the kind of the time period and we had we had conversations about uh, the japanese internment and um we're, we're we we're hoping i'm hoping to be able to include more and more of his story and he, he wrote this great biography just for our family of his stories enlisting he enlisted uh, just a few months after Pearl Harbor, and so wow. he's got these. The, he's got his um, uh, his biography of of all these things that happened. So we've been weaving those into the narrative as well, and uh -huh. then and then part of our show, part of this collapsing of distance, we imagine what if, what if Ocean, Michael's grandpa, were able to meet Papa Jim. Um, uh what you know what, what would happen then so we've, we've had fun it's been fun to to kind of smash these uh two worlds together and to ima imagine that they that they uh would, would meet in some way yeah yeah well thank you so much for talking to us it's such a wonderful project and um I just uh, when it, so do you actually have dates do you know exactly when it's going Hope, up hopefully when this goes up we maybe in the chat or something we can put up the actual dates we no, i think november i think it's i think we're in pretty november. sure it's going to happen in november that they're at here and then and then virtually okay all right yeah hopefully people can check back in awesome <laughs> all right uh thank you so much thanks really so much yeah, really i can't it. wait to um, hang out in person <laughs> yes sounds great right. thank, you so much. thank you